Hello everyone. Okay, so today's video, uh, we are going over the laws of indices and using them laws of indices to solve um, index equations or um, algebraic equations involving them. So, recap. So, what are indices? So, indices are, they take kind of take this form. So, say I have a number, say we call it A, I have the pair of X. This A is known as my base number. And then the little floating number on top is known as my indice or my index. So, for example, I have 2 to the power of, let's say, 3. So, 2 is my base and 3 is my indice. So, there are, in your curriculum, there are nine, I don't want to say in your curriculum, like for any for anyone, there's like nine laws of indices. Um, you are given them on the day. They are on page 21 of your formula table book. I'm going to go quickly over the nine laws with an example in each. And then we're going to solve some index equations and wrap up this video nicely. Right. So, first of all, my first three laws here. So, if I have two numbers, so let's look at law one here. If I, what it says here is, if I have two numbers in the same base and I'm multiplying them together, I'm just adding the powers. So let's have a look at this example here. I have three to the power of four times three to the power of six. So I'm multiplying two numbers in the same base. So three to the power of four equals three times three times three times three. And then I'm multiplying that by three to the power of six which is three times three times three times three times three. Oh, mouthful, right? But look here, how many times am I multiplying three by itself now? I'm multiplying it by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Missed one, 10. I'm multiplying it by itself 10 times. So six, so th three to the power of four times three to the power of six equals three to the power of, so my law here, so if I have two numbers same base, add the powers, 4 plus 6, which is equal 3 to the power of 10, which I've just proven why we do that there. The next one now, my law 2, is the division law. So if I have two numbers in the same base and I'm dividing them, I'm just subtracting the powers. Now, so for example, I have 5 to the power of 8 divided by 5 to the power of 3. Again, just to kind of reiterate this, so I have 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. We should have picked smaller numbers here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm dividing that all by 5 times 5 times 5. Right, that means I can cancel out 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5. How many 5s am I left? I have 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Times five. So I'm left with... So 5 to the power of 8 divided by 5 to the power of 3 equals 5 to the power of 8 minus 3, which equals 5 to the power of 5, which makes sense with my answer here because I am I end up multiplying 5 by itself 5 times. And then finally, my last rule here, I'm doing my law 3, well my last rule for this section anyway, my law 3 here, if I have a number, if I have a number to a power, and I'm putting that number to another power. So, for example, like 2 to the power of 3. To the, like, like, two, like 2 squared to the power of 3. Right? A power to a power. What I do is I just multiply the powers together. So, let's have a look at this one here. So, 2 squared to the power of 5. So, that's 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared. And I use my first rule. If I'm multiplying numbers in the same base, I add the powers. So it's going to be 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is equal 2 to the power of 10. Or you just do 2 to the power of 2 times 5, which is 2 to the power of 10. So if I have a power to a power, I'm using law 3, which is a power to a power, I just multiply the powers. That's law three. The next law we have here, law four, 
any non-zero number to the power of zero equals one. So what do I mean by that? If I have, say, two to the power of zero, that's going to equal one. If I have three to the power of zero, that's going to equal one. If I have 120, 123,000, yeah, whatever, to the power of zero, it's going to equal one. So anything to the power of zero equals one. Now, a proof to visualize this, we can use law two here. So I'm just going to say, for example, two squared divided by two squared. If I use my second law here, I'm going to have, so my second law is if I'm dividing and subtracting powers, it's going to be 2 to the power of 2 minus 2, which is 2 to the power of 0. But I also know anything divided by itself equals 1. So therefore, I've proven that 2 to the power of 0 is equal to 1, or anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So that's a really important one. Anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Again, these are all in your formula and table books. Now we have negative indices. And negative indices, how do they work? Well, what they just mean here is if I have, let's say, a number here. If I have, say, 1 over 3, 1 third, so if I have a fraction, 1 over 3, that is the same as if I bring this 3 above, um, above the line here. That's the same as 3, but then I change the power. I change the sign of the power. So if I'm bringing the 3 up, I have to change the sign of the power. So that's just a 3 to the power of 1. So I bring that up, that's going to become a 3 to the power of minus 1. Another example would be, let's just say, I have 2 divided by, um, I don't know. Whoopsie daisy, spoilers. Right. 5 squared. Yeah, that's the same as 2 times, if I'm bringing the 5 squared up, 2 times 5 to the power of minus 2. You know, it's just another way of writing it. So if I have a negative power, so this works conversely as well. So if I have um, 3 to the power of negative 3, that's going to equal 1 over 3 cubed which is equal to 1 over and 3 cubed is 27. So law 5 deals with negative indice. So a negative indice, you bring it on the line and put, and put it to the power that it's given to. Right. Um, fractional indices. Yeah. So fractional indices. So if I have an indice that is a fraction, so if you look here, I have, say, square root of 7. If I have the square root of a number, that can just be written as 7 to the power of a half. So if I have a square root, that's equal to a half. The same here. If I have a, the cubed root of 5, that's going to be 5 to the power of a third. Right? And same if I was trying the fourth root, fourth root, of like six, it'd be six to the power of a quarter, right? So the general rule is here. So a to the power of one over q, whatever, q can be anything, equals the qth root, the qths, the qths, the qth root of a. So anyway, you just take that q, you put it outside a square root symbol, that's it. Then law seven expands upon law six now. So I have here 16 to the power of 3 quarters. Well, I'm going to use law 3. So law 3 is the power to a power. So I can rewrite this as 16 to the power of 3 times, oh, not times, to the power of a quarter. Yeah? 16 to the power of 3 to the power of a quarter. So, and because remember, and power to a power and multiply. So 3 to the power, um, 16 cubed to the power of a quarter, 3 times a quarter is 3 quarters. Next, law 6. Well, I have my fractional here. So that's going to be the fourth root of 16 cubed. And that's my answer there. So just know, if you deal with a, um, a fraction, um, 
a power like a power of a fraction you put the numerator on the inside of the square root and you put the denominator or the number below the line outside the square root yeah so see here that's going outside and this is going inside so the general rule is that okay a product raised to an index so a product so a product remember is just another word for a multiplication and what are we saying here so law eight would be if i have a multiplication to a power so say for example i have two times three to the power of two I know that's the same as 2 times 3 times 2 times 3, which is the same as 2 times 3 times 2 times 3, which is the same as 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, which is the same as 2 squared times 3 squared. So my rule is here, if I have a multiplication to a power, I just take that power and attach the both um, of the terms. So 2 times 3 to the power of 2, that's the same as 2 squared times 3 squared. And it works for algebra as well. So if I have xy to the power of 4, that's the same as x to the power of 4, y to the power of 4. So it only works if inside my bracket or the thing I'm putting a power to is a multiplication. And then finally... The same rule applies to fractions as well. So if I'm dividing two numbers and I have it to a power, that's the same as x to the power of 4 all over y to the power of 4. So they are my laws of indices. Your best method of study for these is literally just practice them. Practice, practice, practice. It's not something that clicks right away. It's just something you need to practice and do. All right. So now um, we're getting on to the equations involving indices or index equations as they also are known. So index equations are in the form a to the, like a number, a to the power of x equals b, or a number to a power of an unknown, like a, to a variable, which equals something else. So note, this is a really important rule for this. If both sides are in the same base, I can just let the powers equal each other. So if I, if I say for example here, if I have a to the power of x equals a to the power of y, then I know I can let the indices equal each other, therefore x equals y. So again, no point me saying this, let's do some questionies. And these how and this is how it will primarily come up in your exam in the leaving search anyway. Um so let's have a look at these. So solve each of the following equations: five to the power of x equals one over one two five. So we want to write, we want to write, we want to express 1 over 125 as a power of x. So what I'm going to do is, so I have 5 to the power of x, law 5. So this is my negative, um, my negative um, rule. So if I have a negative power, um, it goes underneath the line. So I have 5 over x, 125 is the same as 5 cubed. Then if I apply law 5, so just remember a to the power of minus x equals 1 over a to the x. So I have a negative power. I have 5 to the x, then is equal to, if I'm bringing this above the line now, it's going to be 5 to the power of minus 3. Let both, um, the both in the same base, they both have a base of 5. So now let the powers equal to each other. So now I have x equals minus 3. Bada boom, bada bing. Yeah? Easy peasy. And then you can check this by subbing it in in your calculator as well. If you just sub in your calculator and get the and you get the one over one two five, you know you're doing something right. Next here, um, B is a bit more tricky because I need to change a few bits. So, uh, what basis am I dealing with here? I have four, eight, and square root of two. That's a lot of different numbers. So I need to get them all in the same base. Yeah. So I need to think what oh sorry I need to think of a number right that all of these are a power of and in this case it's 2 and I'd find that you would never go beyond 5 really 
you might get an easy six or seven pairs pairs of six or seven but beyond that they won't ask you to do anything wild anyway with massive numbers um like beyond like 10 like not gonna ask you to put stuff in the pairs of like 13 that's a bit weird like who knows that 13 pairs losers that's why um what am i talking about yeah so we need to get all of these as pairs of two so i want to change this four to a pair of a two well four like four is two to the pair of two four is two squared done eight eight is two to the power of three so two times two times two right so you need to just kind of put these in your calculator and kind of figure it out on the day so do eight divided by two divide by two divide by two see how many times you can divide two into something and that's the power and then finally square root of two remember i'm using my law of fractional indices it's law seven i believe so i have remember i have that invisible two I have an invisible two there so that's just two to the power of one half so remember a square root we're putting a power of a half so now the equation can be written as follows 2 squared to the power of x equals 2 cubed to the power of 2 and a half. So I'm using law 3 and 6 here. So law 3 is my um, division one here. So I'm subtracting powers if I'm dividing numbers the same base. And law 6 is the power of a power. Of a power. No not anyway you get the point it's all over but don't you actually know need to know the actual order yeah this is actually just confusing everyone don't need to know the actual order of which one's which all you know is now i need to simplify my left hand side my right hand side all i know is now i have two squared to the power of x a power to a power i multiply so it's two to the power of two x two cubed divided by two to the power of a half that's gonna be the same as two to the power of three minus a half 2 to the power of 2x equals 2 to the power of 2.5 or 2.5 or however you want. Same thing, different shape, whatever you want to write it. So I have 2x equals 2.5. x equals 1.75. And you can put that in your calculator to check. So remember, I, these are in the same base. So since they're in the same base, I can let the pairs equal to each other. So that's why I was able to say 2x equals 2.5. Right, so I'm going to do some more examples now. And then hopefully I'll wrap this up video soon. So if this question will load, that would be great. Right, so solve the equation. 16, can I zoom in? Why is everything? There you go. 16 to the power of 2x equals 4 to the power of 2x plus 4. Sorry about my dog, I'm not editing this. So I have a 16 and a 4, so I need to change these into the power of something. Well, 16 can be written as 4 squared, and 4, well, that could be written as 4 to the power of 1. Happy days. All right, so I have now 4 squared to the power of 2x equals 4 to the power of 2x plus 4. So I'm using law 3. Now I really hope it's law 3 and to mix them up. Anyway, power to a power I multiply. So 4 squared to the power of 2x is the same as 4 to the power of 4x. Which equals 4 to the power of 2x plus 4. Same base, let the powers equal. So I have 4x equals 2x plus 4. Letters to the left, numbers to the right. 2x equals 4, dot dot dot, x equals 2. So x equals 2, and again, if you just sub that into your calculator, and you can check your answer. Alright, next one here. Right, I'm dealing with fractions, and I'm dealing with square roots. Ding, 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 ding. I am dealing with negative. First of all, I'm dealing with, the fraction tells me I'm de dealing with a negative um power and then the square root is telling me i'm dealing with a fractional power so they are something i need to be aware of and i have 25 so first let's change all of my things into the base of 25 oh not ba base 25 no base 5 sorry so 25 as a pair of 5 is 5 squared and square root 5 as a pair of 5 is 5 to the power of a half so remember, a square root is the is equal to one half. 
Now I write it out. So 5 squared to the power of y equals 1 over 5 to the power of a half. So I have 5 to the power of 2y, because remember a power to a power I multiply. Then I have 1 all over 5 to the power of minus a half. Oh, 5, 5 to the power of a half. And I want to bring this up, so it's going to be 5 to the power of minus a half. Or another way to look at it here, 1 is the same as 5 to the power of 0, all over 5 to the power of a half. Then use my subtraction rule. I have 5 to the power of 0 minus a half, which equals 5 to the power of minus a half. Anyway, it's another way of looking at it, if that helps you better. But now, again, I have my thing here. The two bases are equal. So 5 to the power of 2y is equal 5 to the power of minus a half. So 2y is equal to minus 1 half. Y is going to equal to minus 1 quarter. Y is equal to minus 1 over 4. And again, sub it into the calculator to check. Then finally, the last question I have here. 3 to, um, three to the power of 3p minus 7 equals the fourth root of 27. So I have 3 and I have a 27 as my base. Um, so let's change these. So 3, I'm putting powers of 3, so 3 can say the same really. So that's fine. Then the 27. 27 is the same as 3 cubed. So I have 3 to the power of 3p minus 7 equals the fourth root of 3 cubed. 3 to the power of 3p minus 7 equals now the fourth root. And I have a power here. So that is the same as 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 1 quarter. Which is the same as 3 to the power of 3p minus 7 which is equal to 3 to the power of 3 quarters. Because a power to a power, I, I multiply. Or you look at law 9, 8, it's one of them. Anyway, look at either or, I'm rambling. It's like 22 minutes, anyway. So I have them in the same base. So since they're in the same base, I can let the powers equal. So 3p minus 7 equals 3 over 4. 3p equals 3 over 4 plus 7. 3p equals 3 quarters plus 7. Oh my god, what's that? 31 over 4. I then divide by 3. Oh my god, put this on your calculator. Who has time to do fractions in their head? Anyway, I think p is going to equal to 31 over 12. And I think that's going to be my final answer there i hope i'm actually just going to double check on my calculator now just to make sure i'm right and check my answer with a good mathematician because i've not prepared this question beforehand so let's hope i'm right let's whip up the old calculator here there we go okay so i have so my i'm saying my answer is 31 to the power of 12 so i have three uh to the power of three times the three p so it'd be 31 Divided by 12 minus 7 equals uh, 2.28. Cool. Let me check this now to fourth root. So I want to get this um, one up here. So the blanks on the inside and the outside of the square root. So shift this fourth root of 27 equals. 2.2795 so the same answer so I am right there and I can circle box and highlight my answer anyway 25 minutes how do I do it anyway um I hope this helped I think I don't know it's a bit rambly anyway um not doing it again anyway um enjoy and I'll catch you on the flip side peace